hey, if, uh, if everything went as planned at school today, then you watched a video in class about uh, a guy draining a lady's pool, and the water was draining ever so slowly at a constant rate, and she wanted it done by 8 o'clock, and it didn't work out that way. But anyway, um, you had a little taste of what linear equations are. Now we can also, we also use this word functions or function rule. So if you hear the word linear equation or function or function rule, um, they're kind of all the same. But let's take a look at this because we have a lot to learn today. So check this out. Relations and functions, we're on 11, 1 here, starting chapter 11. As I said in class earlier, I'm sure, um, these, what you're going to learn in this chapter 11 about linear equations, how to graph lines and whatnot, is so applicable to so many scenarios in business and in science and in life. So, here's the start. We have to distinguish between a relation and a function, and I'll tell you that in just a second. But first, let's take a look at this. Your soccer team is selling glow sticks to raise money. The team paid 50 bucks for a case of 48 glow sticks and sells each glow stick for $3. <laughs> I hope these are the, the thick kind of glow sticks because I don't know if I'd pay 3 bucks for one of those little skinny ones. So, $50 you paid for the box. It has 48 glow sticks and you're selling for 3 bucks each. How many glow sticks does the team need to sell to start earning a profit? Well, from a few... A few chapters ago, we were presented with, with inequality type scenarios like this. So let's just let's just chew on this a little bit for a second. So 50 bucks is what we paid into this, right? And so this is uh, expenses. And then our profit or our income, maybe it's a better word, our income would be, depends on how many glow sticks we sell, right? But we're selling each glow stick for $3. Let me just adjust the brightness on this here for a sec. Okay, so if we're selling them for $3, I'll put 3G. That would be $3 times the number of glow sticks we sell. Now, let's just write an equation here. Our profit, P, our profit would equal the amount of income we have, 3G, minus our expenses. Isn't that right? So if I sell five glow sticks, that means I would make $3 times five, that would be 15, but I already paid 50, so 15 minus 50, my profit would be negative 35. Right? There, that would not be profit, that'd be a loss. So how many do we have to sell? Well, guess what? This right here is a linear equation. It is a function rule, if you will. So let's talk a little bit more about that and see what happens. Um, it says, you'll answer this question in example two, and I'm just gonna flip over there real quick and show that to you. So to solve the problem, use this function rule, which we just came up with, P equals 3G minus 50. P is the profit in dollars. G is the number of glow sticks that your team sells. Now, you can make a table. Pay close attention to this, okay? You can make a table that has input on the left, function in the middle, and output on the right. And here's what you need to understand. A function, or a function rule, or a linear equation, Okay, in this, term, in this case, I'm going to use the term function rule, because that's what your book is using. A function rule is like a vending machine. If you stick something in, a dollar, you get a can of pop. If you stick in a dollar fifty, you get a Powerade or something. If you stick in 50 cents, you get a little juice box. Okay? You input one thing, see if I can do this right, you input one thing into the vending machine, and it spits something out. You need to start thinking in these terms with function rules. I can input whatever I want to, and depending on what I input in there, 
dollar, dollar fifty, fifty cents, or whatever, whatever I put in, that's going to affect, here's the vending machine, that's going to affect what comes out. Okay, pretty simple concept, but let's apply that to math now. So if I input zero, okay, and our input is what's on the on this right side over here, the G. Okay, we're not inputting profit, are we? No, we can't input that. Profit would be the output. We can input how many glow sticks we sell. Okay, on this day I sold 12, tomorrow I sold another 13, so 25 or whatever. But let's say zero. Let's input zero for G. I sold zero glow sticks. Put it into this vending machine or this function and you would get out negative 50 would be your profit. That makes sense. If you sell 10 glow sticks, input that, you would have negative $20 as your profit. Okay, that'd be a loss. And let's skip down here. If you input 17, your profit would be positive. It'd be $1. Congratulations. You are not in the hole. You have made a profit of $1. If you sell how many glow sticks? 17. So if you can sell more than 17 glow sticks, if you sold all 48, what would that be? 3 times 48, 120, and another 20, 144-ish. I might be wrong, minus 50. So almost $100. That's how much profit you would make if you sold all 48. So do you get this idea that you can, if you have a function rule like this, you can input um, the amount of eggs you sell at, the, at your little stand on the side of the road because you own chickens or you can input this or that. There's endless scenarios where you could use function rules. And then the output comes out on the other side over here. You stick it through the function, comes out the other side. Okay, but there's a couple more terms that we gotta understand. By the way, the chapter title is Relations and Functions. We have been talking about a function so far. How would you feel <clears throat> if you and your friends walk up to a vending machine and you've been playing basketball all day at the park or whatever you do and you're thirsty okay and there's the little juice boxes and there's the can of pops and then there's the big power aids um, so your friend walks up puts in a dollar fifty and they get a power aid cool so you walk up and you say I want one too you stick in a dollar fifty and you get a little juice box wouldn't you say that that vending machine is broken. Wouldn't you be a little angry? Wouldn't you start to shake that thing? Be like, give me my Powerade, right? Because if you put one thing in to the vending machine, it should always give you the same output, shouldn't it? If it's working right. If I put 50 cents in, I get a juice box. If it gives me a Powerade, I'd be like, sweet, I won the jackpot because that wouldn't be normal in my favor. I put $1.50 in, hoping to get a Powerade, but I get a can of pop or a juice box, I'd be like, what? This thing's broken. A function or a function rule is a good working vending machine. In other words, no matter what you put in, it will only give you one output. It won't give you two different things. Okay, now the vending machine analogy breaks down here for a second because check this out. A relation, um, a relation is like a broken vending machine. So watch, watch this. A relation is a set of ordered pairs that relates an input to an output. So let's say here's all your inputs of whatever numbers. These are just random numbers they chose. Okay. And then these are the corresponding random outputs that they chose. Okay, so this is a relation. Two is related to five. Four is related to seven. Negative one is related to 15. Zero is related to zero. Now, a relation is a function. A specific type of relation is called a function or a function rule if for each input there is exactly one output. <clears throat> In a function, you can say that the output is a function of the input. So watch this. Let's look at example one. Tell whether the relation is a function. <clears throat> so we've got some ordered pairs here, right? These are like coordinates. This is like the x and this is like the y. 
zero goes with two. This is like input, output, input, output, okay? <clears throat> if you put a zero in, you get a two. If you put a one in, you get a four. You put a two in, you get a six. You put a three in, you get an eight. See that pattern there? Let's see, is it a function? Each input, there's exactly one output. Every input I put here is giving me one different, is giving me one output, right? It's not like, so here's the difference. Let me just put this right here. What if there was another one in the list here that said 2, 7? Um, that would be like putting a dollar fifty in and getting a Powerade, and then putting another dollar fifty in and getting a juice box. You put a 2 in here and you get a 6. Okay, so the next person walks up and they're like, hey, I want to put a 2 in because I want a 6. But then they get a 7. That's not right. In this case, for each input, here's an input of two, there is not exactly one output. There's two different outputs. Let's say the third guy walks up, puts in a two, and they get a 100. That's not fair. That's not right, is it? So if these coordinates or these ordered pairs were included in this data set, this data set would be considered a relation. Because these numbers are related to each other, okay. But in this case, without my added numbers, my added order pairs. In this case, this is a specific type of relation called a function because every input has exactly one output. Now, one more thing. See if you can understand this. If I put a four in here, okay, I'm just gonna add on to the end of this. Zero, two, one, four, two, six, three, eight. And I'm gonna do a four, eight. The output here is the same as the output here, 8 and 8, but the inputs are different. Am I getting exactly one output for every input? Well, 0 is giving me 2, 1 is giving me 4, 2 is giving me 6, 3 gives me exactly one output, and that's 8. 4 gives me exactly one output, and that's 8. Doesn't matter that it's the same as that output. That's okay. We could do a 5, 8. That's okay. But if there's the same input, like 4, um, so 4 gave me 8 here, and then I do 4 here, and it gives me a 10, that's like, ew, ew, not okay. All right, so you can have different inputs. You might have to rewatch this to wrap your mind around. You can have different inputs giving you the same output, 8 and 8, and that can still be a function. But you cannot have different, let me watch my words here, you cannot have um, the same input give you different outputs. So back to our vending machine example. So it's like this. The vending machine would be broken if you put a $1.50 in, you get a Powerade, and then you put a $1.50 in, and you get a juice box. It would be broken. But it would be okay to say a dollar fifty gets you a Powerade. And let's say if, um, like the little menu of the uh, of the vending machine, two dollars also gives you a Powerade. Okay, that would be weird. We don't see that, right? But a dollar fifty gives me a Powerade. Oh, you know what? It, it, that could happen. What if you don't have change? What if you just have dollar bills? So I'm the vending machine maker man, and I'm like, hey, if they have exact change for $1.50, I'll give them a Powerade. But if they don't have exact change, I'm going to also give an option of, you put $2 into my vending machine, and you still get a Powerade. That would still be a function, because there is exactly one output for different inputs. Okay, rewatch that if that's confusing. So, is this one a relation or a function? Well, it's obviously a relation. All these ordered pairs, you know, are relations. There's inputs and outputs. But is it a function? Well, I've got two nine inputs, and they're giving me, um, that same input is giving me different outputs. That's not okay. This same input of 25 is giving me different outputs. This relation is not a function because 
in, same inputs are giving me different outputs. Okay, your turn now. Let's look at the bottom. Let's just do this one more. Is this a relation or a function? Right down here. Can you see that? Input, output. Input, output. Ooh, different inputs giving same output. That's okay. Input, output. Input, output. Ooh, this input. Ooh, check this out. Look where my finger and my pen are. Same input, negative 2 and negative 2, but different outputs, 4 and negative 4. This is a relation, not a function. Do you see any same inputs here? I don't see any same inputs. Therefore, it doesn't even matter what these numbers are. There's no same in input, so this is a function. All right. That's the first step to understanding these linear equations and stuff. Um, and, and this is kind of a hard concept to grasp. It's not always going to be this difficult. There's some stuff that's a little more concrete, but there's the relationship between, or, or the difference between a relation, ordered pairs, and a function, ordered pairs with exactly one output. Now we've got to talk about two more terms, and let's get on with it. So, domain and range. You might know from an older sibling, or even from your, some of your own experience, that you can graph functions, right? And I'm already over time here, but that's all right. I'll try to speed up a little bit. You can graph functions in a coordinate plane, x and y. So a function you graph might look like that. Okay, just a line. Well, did you know you can also, sometimes they go out here, right? Or sometimes they look like parabola, parabolas. <laughs> now, these two words, domain and range, all they mean is the domain is how wide is this graph. So, let me do this little line right here. I'll just put little endpoints on it like that. The domain of this graph, okay, that's a graph. The domain of that is very small. It's the x values. How far is it? How wide is it, I should say? That's the domain. How wide is this? Well, the domain would be between like, you know, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, 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 four, six. The domain would be between four and six. Range means how tall is it? That's the range. Now, this huge line going all the way through my graph, what's the domain of that? Well, that's like all the way from negative eight up to positive 10. The domain is how wide it is. The range is how tall is it? The range would be all the way from negative, because look, I'm in the negative y's over here, negative 2 up to about positive 6. That would be the range. So, the domain of a function is a set of all possible input values. Oh, there's a clue. We always graph the input axis as the horizontal axis, and the output axis as the vertical axis. That'll make more sense later. Okay, domain is of a function is all the set of possible input values. So the domain of this function, well, you can sell zero glow sticks, and you could sell all the way up to 48 glow sticks, right? All of your possible inputs would be zero to 48. So 48 is the domain of this function. What are all the possible profits? Well, the range goes from negative 50. Your profit would be negative 50 would be your worst profit. All the way up to, looks like 94 would be your best profit. I said close to 100. Yeah, it's close to 100. So negative 50 all the way to 94 would be your range. Because that's your possible output values. Range of a function is a set of all possible output values. Okay, we need to do one more thing. <laughs> Stay with me here. You guys can handle this. Whew. All right. Write a function rule that relates x and y. You need to write one of these equations, like y equals 2x minus 5. Whew. You need to write some sort of equation that works with this data. 
Now don't get scared. It's going to be okay. Here's the first step. Put the data into a table like this. Input being x, output y. Put it horizontally. And, and they might even just give you the table like this. And you need to notice this pattern. In fact, write this in. Negative 4 to negative 2 is adding 2. Oh, and that's adding 2. Adding 2, adding 2. And the output is adding 2 every time. Okay, now sometimes that, that won't be the case. Sometimes you'll be adding 2 on the input every time, but the output will be adding 4 every time. Okay, but in this case, it's 2 and 2. So, here, right here, guys, is the key, the ticket to ride. Y equals AX plus B. Y, remember this, Y equals AX plus B. You'll hear this a lot more for like the whole year in algebra class. Y equals, and they'll talk about it in terms of MX plus B. But these are essentially the same thing. Okay? Now, you start with this, Y equals AX plus B. The Y and the X are just going to stay Y and X. We're not going to put numbers in for those, but we are going to put numbers in for A and B. So, how do you do that? Step number one. You're going to have to flip back here to example three to do this, okay? Step number one. A is the change in, in, in output, so this two here on the bottom, divided by the change in input, two on the top, both positive twos. So, A equals 2 over 2. Now, if there were 4s on the bottom and 2s on the top, it would be 4 over 2, which would be 2. But in this case, it's 2 over 2 equals 1. So, let's plug the 1 in for the A. That's what they did here. That was step number 1. Now, we just need to find the amount for B. We actually need to find a number for B and replace the B. Here's how you do that. To find B, choose an input-output pair. What does that mean? Up here, here's an input-output pair, negative 4, 1. Here's an input-output pair, negative 2, 3. We also call these ordered pairs, right? Or 0, 5. Choose any one of those. I'm going to choose uh, 0 and 5. That's what they did, because 0 is pretty easy to work with in math. So we're going to choose 0, 5. So choose an input-output pair to substitute for x and y. Well, the input is like the x. The output's like the y. So, let's take our, our equation we have so far, y equals 1x plus b, and we're going to choose 0 and 5. We're going to put 0 in for the x and, and 5 in for the y. So they put 5 in for the y equals 1x, no, 1, 0, plus b. Now we just solve that equation to see what b is. What is 1 times 0? It's 0. What's 0 plus b is just b. So 5 equals b, or b equals 5. Okay? Choose an input-output pair, plug it in for the x and y, and then solve for b. Now, final step, rewrite it, y equals ax plus b, but put your a in, or 1, and put your b in, or 5. So, a function rule that relates x and y here, Function rule for this problem is y equals 1x, and they just wrote x, plus 5. Boom. That is the equation. y equals x plus 5. Later, you're going to learn how to actually graph that. Would it look like that? Would it look like that? Would it be a vertical line? So, we'll talk about that later, though. All right. Wow. Congratulations. I think that might have been the longest video yet. Um, but we have to set the stage for this chapter well, because this chapter is essential. Okay? So stick with it. And this first lesson was kind of a lot. The next lessons, I'm not saying they'll be easy, but I don't think they'll be quite this much all at once. So, for those of you that need to see the GP odds, let's see, guided practice or getting ready to practice. Here they are. Everybody needs to do one, three, five, and seven. You're going to have to write one of these function rules. Remember, find the change. This looks like one, one, one. Change over here looks like 
negative 5, negative 5, negative 5. All right, good luck with that. I think you can do it.